Hey, thank you for watching Proco. I'm Andrew Joseph Keith, your instructor for this, the Figure Sculpting Fundamentals course. Today, I'll be showing you how to take your own references for sculpture. I know that we've gone over a lot of concepts without diving into the actual sculpting part, but that will come. I'm doing this because I want you to understand all of the prep work that goes on behind the scenes to get started on the right foot. The human body is extremely complicated. Don't believe me? Check out the anatomy course. Even when we have a model standing directly in front of us, it is extremely difficult to accurately capture all the information as we sculpt. It becomes even more of a challenge when we don't have a model to study from. When people contact me to show me their first sculpture and get my advice, my first question is usually, what are you using as a reference? And the answer is usually that they're sculpting from imagination. If you think that you'll be able to sculpt something that actually looks good from imagination on your first try, well, you are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. and I know that this is a common mistake because my first sculptures were done from imagination too. And guess what? They were terrible. I mean, they're just awful. So don't make this mistake. Chances are, if you sculpt from imagination, it won't turn out as you imagined. Some masters are able to draw or sculpt convincingly from imagination, but they have spent years observing and learning about the figure as well as how to copy what they observe. This is why references are so important, especially as you're just beginning. The best reference is sculpting from life, where we can directly observe the model. But that's not always an option, so we may have to make do with photographs. There are places online where you can purchase references for sculpting that have multiple angles. PoseSpace.com is a good example with well-lit, high-resolution photos of various models and poses with at least 24 angles of each pose. Anatomy360.com is another great resource with 3D scans of models. You can look at these poses from any angle and change the settings on the lighting as well. There will be links to these resources in the description below. These references are great, but we may not be able to find the exact pose that we want to sculpt online. As artists, we shouldn't be limited by the creativity of others. We should be able to come up with our own poses and document them accurately so that we'll have all the references that we'll need. Fortunately, with a camera or a smartphone, we have all the resources we'll need to take our own references. We have technology. So let's look at how we can use ourselves or a friend as a reference for a new pose that we want to sculpt. I'll show you how to do the whole thing yourself and then I'll show you how a friend that can either pose for you or take the photos can make the process a little bit easier. First, let's think about what makes a good pose for sculpture. One of the best ways to see if a pose will work well is to focus on the silhouette. If the silhouette or outline is unclear or uninteresting from several angles, then maybe try a new pose. Obviously, it's hard to find a pose that's interesting from every angle, but having the outline and contours of the body in mind helps me to decide if the pose will look good as a sculpture. Once we've got the pose in mind, we can find an area with a background that doesn't distract too much from the figure. This doesn't need to be anything fancy. A white, gray, or black background that is free from too much clutter will help us focus on the figure. I recommend having a strong light source coming from one side of the figure at a 3 fourths view and a softer light source from the opposite direction to serve as reflected light. Having these two light sources will help capture some of the more subtle forms on the surface of the figure. Avoid having a figure backlit by a window or other strong source of light, as well as using a strong flash that lights the figure from straight on. Both of these extremes tend to wash out the figure and eliminate shadows that help us see the surface forms. Now let's talk about placing the camera. We should make sure that we are far enough back so that the figure will not be distorted because of the extreme perspective. For example, if I was sculpting a bust of myself and took reference photos with the camera too close from the side view, it will appear that my ear is much larger than it actually is. From the front view, my nose will appear too large because it is closest to the camera. So make sure that your camera is a good distance away. Usually about two body lengths or 10 to 15 feet is a good rule of thumb. When capturing references of the full figure, we should try to have the camera at about waist height. 
so that it doesn't distort the head or the feet. That being said, there are some areas of the body that might be easier to observe if we take close-ups from above or below. So after we make our first 360 degree turnaround from farther back with the camera at waist height, we can then take another 360 degree turnaround from above or below and closer to the figure to capture more details. Close-ups of some areas like the hands or the face can be very helpful. Okay, now that we've got the space for the photo, the lighting set up, and the camera in the right place, it's time to take the references. I usually use my phone to take these references, so I'll set up my phone on a tripod or a desk standing upright, facing the front so I can see that I'm inside the view of the camera, and I will press record to make a short video. If your camera has time-lapse capabilities, you can also set it to take incremental photos at a rate you determine in order to bypass having to take a video. Notice with this setup, the camera and lighting are stationary and the model will turn. The reason for this is that if we capture the reference by circling the model, the lighting will be inconsistent. When the model turns and everything else is stationary, the light and shadow are consistent from every angle. As the model's turning around to get that 360 degree look at the pose, the trick is to turn in place as slow as possible. As you turn, your load-bearing foot may change for a second, so move as little as you can and then make sure that you come back to the correct pose again. Pause for a second, then continue turning. Keep in mind that if the model is flexing from one angle, but relaxes as he turns, the references will not be consistent. The goal is for the pose to be the same from every angle. If done right, we should have around 20 to 30 times that we've paused in order to turn full circle. As we are finishing up, continue to turn past the starting point to make sure that we have all the angles that we need and that we didn't stop short of the full 360. It is important to have all of these different angles because whatever information we cannot observe from our references, we will have to make up. This may be fine for some experienced sculptors who already understand the figure and anatomy and the forms, but for most people starting out, imagining details tends to make things worse not better. Okay, now that we have the video, we can use that as a reference by pausing at different spots. This works fine, but what I prefer to do is to take screenshots of the pose from each angle that we paused for. Once I have taken all those screenshots, I can move the photos into a folder and just swipe back and forth on my phone to turn the figure around. If there are areas that are better referenced from above or below, we can repeat the same process with the camera at different angles in order to capture additional information. And there you have it, an easy way to create your own references. If you have someone that can help you with the process, as a model or as the person behind the camera, you can just skip the video process and just take photos from each angle as the model turns. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope this gets you excited to think of some new poses that you can start sculpting with references that you take yourself. This is especially useful for gesture studies because you can be more creative and choose your own poses. Sometimes you'll find a single photo of a pose that you want to sculpt, and you can use this method to take additional references of you or a friend in that pose. Just keep any photo safe that you wouldn't want to get out accidentally. I'd say that nobody wants to see it, but I bet there are some people out there that would want to see that. And it's probably the last person in the world that you would want to have see it. So, take photos responsibly. In the premium lesson, we will have many tips on how to take references of one body type and change it to the kind of physique that you are looking for. With an understanding of the figure and anatomy, we can make our sculptures more muscular, lean, or fat. We will look at some general physical differences between men and women to be able to make our sculptures more masculine or feminine. That way we can use our references of a male model to create female characters and vice versa. In the premium course, there are additional demos, lessons, 3D models, and much more. So I'll see you there at proco.com sculpture.